thing I got things going. Sorry I'm a little late. Uh, it was acting kind of weird, but I think I've ironed out all the kinks. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Um, I also want to make sure um, I am screen grabbing this. Okay, yeah. I know the last time I did this, I uploaded the YouTube video, and it was like not very good quality. Usually I also screen share the Fusion 360 thing and it was like, it didn't work when I did it that time. So I had to take it off of the Instagram thing, which is not my high resolution. Now we should be good. Um, anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Today's stream is brought to you by Cheez-Its and uh, Mojito LaCroix. Never tried this, hopefully it's good. Anyway. Um, Last time I left off with this thing, um, I was working on the headstock, specifically uh, the, the volute, and I was thinking about this the other day and I realized I'm doing this a dumb way and there's a much better way for me to do it. Um, so I'm actually gonna, oh, yo, know, definitely recommend the mojito flavored uh, LaCroix, it's pretty good. Anyway, um, there's a way better way to do this than this because I was looking at it, I realized it goes up high, I could crop it off, but there are like, I don't know if you can see it in the stream. There's this little like curve that's following the curve of the back of this. It doesn't, it, it would be annoying to try and like even that out. And it also like just look weird if I were to actually machine that. My cat's here too. Um, so I'm gonna do this a different way. I'm actually gonna go in to these bodies. I'm gonna delete all these things cause or, you know, let me turn them off first. That'd probably make more sense. All right, I'm gonna turn those off. Um, let's turn these guys off. And I'm gonna go back. Uh, and there my sketches. Turn that off, turn that off. I wanna make a new sketch on the like interior of this headstock, similar to what I was doing. But with the last one, I started the sketch here and really I realized that that isn't the best method. I'm going to actually start the sketch at the widest point of this headstock here. And then I'm gonna make a reference line that's gonna be two inches. All right, and then I'm going to uh, create a con er, yeah, conic curve. Sorry, my cat's like trying to get on the keyboard and it's being annoying. Um, one, two. I'm gonna stretch this out along that center line until it just about hits the two inches. It really doesn't have to be perfect um, because we will ultimately begin cropping this and like a lot of it's gonna get cut off. We just want it like to come up pretty high so that it's easy to shear off later. Um, I like that. I'm going to hit finish sketch, go to surface, patch. I'm going to patch this, hit OK. And then I am going to solid move. Nope, wrong selection. I'm going to select that thing I just made. I'm going to rotate it along here, 90 degrees, hit OK. All right. So now I'm gonna do what I did before to create this thing, um, but with this larger section here. Um, actually, let me turn off the back of this neck. Stop hitting the key, sorry, my cat is like losing her mind. Um, let me find the right one, where is it? I guess it was. Was it that one? I need to find where the, f hold on, let me turn the fretboard on. See, this is why you label things and why I'm stupid. Okay, that's what I want. I needed this guy. All right, um, let me create a sketch here. I'm going to project, hit P on the keyboard. I'm gonna project this little like, you know, lemon wedge guy, hit okay. Now I can turn this thing off, finish sketch, surface. I'm gonna patch the little lemon wedge. All right, cool. Now, um, 
So I have this profile, which is going to be like the apex of this kind of curve I'm going to create. And then here, which is going to be like the lowest point, kind of where that transitions back into the rest of the regular portion of the neck. Um, the last thing I'm going to do before I begin attaching these is make a, um, like a rail for this loft procedure I'm going to do to follow. So I'm going to hit create sketch. I'm creating it on the, my center plane, which I know goes between these two things. I'm going to project that really big one and I'm going to project the little lemon wedge thing I just made. I'm going to hit OK. So now I have these kind of reference points on this sketch. I'm going to create an arc, make it a three point arc. One, two, and just something that like, um, you know, seems reasonable. Um, it might also be a good idea to turn the neck on here just so I can see like, all right, that's going to kind of be the transition as it goes up. And then we're going to like eventually slice it down probably around here somewhere just so we have some more mass where the neck gets at its thinnest point. Um, but that looks good. All right, cool. I'll turn that back off. Finish sketch. Okay, so now I am going to begin lofting and attaching these two things together because it's going to be really, the neck is going to be, when we do this in three parts, it's going to be like the headstock portion, it's going to be this volute transition shape, and then the rest of the back of the neck. And then we're going to shear some things and join them together. So I'm going to go to surface, create, loft. I'm going to take my little lemon wedge, I'm going to take this big guy, and then it like, you know, stretches it like you're stretching um, canvas over tent poles. But we want to have it like, if I look at it from the side right now, it's kind of like this big chonky thing, which we don't want. It would have to be like, if I transitioned it with this into the back of the neck, like that's a very steep angular transition. We don't like that. So I'm going to go to rails, I'm going to select that line, and it's going to curve nicely. But now we got this big bump down here, which I'll clean up in a second. Um, but this is really all I'm concerned with right now, is the back of this. So that's good. I'm going to hit OK. All right. Now I can turn this fretboard off. I'm going to turn the back of the neck off. And I'm also going to turn those guys off. So now I'm left with this weird, like, curved shape thing. I'm going to turn this into a solid shape, because right now if I select it, you can see these are all, like, partial, just a uh, little profile guys. I'm going to go up to stitch, hit stitch. I get my green lines, which means they're looking good. I hit OK. So now it's a closed body, which is what we wanted. Um, sorry, my cat again. All right. Um, let me, ow, jeez. Sorry, it's just like digging into my legs. Um, No, 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 no. Where is the back of the headstock? Okay. I also realized that the way I was doing this with the curved transition was kind of dumb. Um, yeah, I'm going to change this. I'm going to delete this thing. I'm going to go back to my, what was it? Uh, construction planes. I think it was this one. Yeah. I'm going to make a sketch on here, and I'm just going to, I could just actually extrude the headstock shape, but whatever, I'm, I'm already this far. I'm going to hit project. Okay, so now I have the face of the headstock projected on this sketch. And I go to surface, I'm going to patch it. Okay. I'm going to turn this back thing off, turn these guys off. I know I'm turning things on and off a lot, and that's like really a big portion of building these things in Fusion is just like getting it to work. Uh, no, wait, I want to loft these. I want to get these little profiles. Bam, bam, bam. Mm. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did to that, like, volute section to the headstock. I'm going to select all of these partial shapes. I'm going to go to stitch. They're all green. All right. So now, okay. And then I think these are just extra things I can get rid of these partial guys. I'm going to delete those just to uh, delete. Okay. So 
Now, I gotta make this thing work, because right now it's looking like real bad. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna start by cropping this, because right now it, it's resolve, resolving in this like really pointed thing. I wanna have it so like the back of the headstock just has like a smooth kind of like ramped transition into the peak of the volute. So just as a reference, I'm gonna turn on the fretboard so I know like where I want that to end. I'm gonna create a new sketch here. I'm going to project the back of the neck. And then I'm going to create an arc, three point arc. I'm gonna start here because it projects where that like, you know, this thing is. And then I'm gonna go out to above where I want like the highest point of the volute. I don't want it to be like super chunky. I want it to just be like, it's more of an aesthetic thing. Since this is gonna be a uh, scarf joint neck, the volute's really not doing much structurally, but um, let's see, something like that. I also don't want it like too far up on the first fret because I think that feels awkward when you play. Um, all right. So I have that, uh, oh wait, no, I made that curve bad, hold on. Let me try that again. Something like, something like that, okay. Now I'm gonna go to the line tool and I'm just gonna close this shape off. All right, so it's solid blue, that means it's a closed shape and it's good to go. Um, I'm going to finish sketch. So now I'm going to extrude this to slice this guy and get it more in a shape that I actually want it to. Um, so I'm going to hit Q for press pull, select this. And now everything we have been doing so far, I've just been projecting one way, but there are different settings in here. So I can do like symmetrical, bam, and it's going to cut it two sides. Hit OK. Great. So now, this is much more uh, in line with what I wanted. I have this kind of like subtle transition, gives me a little bit more mass behind the fretboard and like where it gets thin. That's nice. Um, now I gotta clean up the headstock cause I have like these weird pointed things, which you know I'm not really vibing with. I wanna have it like mimic that transition. Um, I also gotta shear the ends of this. Actually, I'm gonna start with that. So to get those, I'm going to go to solid, combine, and then I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm gonna split it using the, the profile of those like flared out parts of the headstock. Um, so for a tool bodies, I'm gonna select, ah, come on. I just wanna, why, why are you selecting the whole thing? Bro, no, what, no. Oh, I have join selected. That's why I'm stupid. Hold on. I gotta go. I gotta select cut. But why is it just no? Just do. All right. Let's try this again. Oh, it's not combined. I'm sorry. I lied. It's split body. I, I picked the wrong tool. There we go. I'm gonna select that. Then I'm gonna go here and it'll allow me to pick that little curved section. And you can see that red line is showing you where it's going to cut, which is great. That's right along the edge of my neck. Hit OK. So now this little body, I can turn that on and off. I'm actually just going to delete them. Whatever, remove. OK. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Split body, select, oh wait, no, wait, select this thing. Uh, for the tool, I'm gonna use the curve on this side of the headstock, hit okay, made this body, cool, delete it, remove anyway. All right, wait, uh, yeah, okay. So now when we look at it from the front, it's like not jutting out, but we still have these weird corner things that we wanna get rid of. For that, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna split, but I'm gonna split this body, and as the tool, I'm gonna use this kind of curved form that we created, it'll project some weird like, odd profile, but that's fine. Hit OK. And then we have these two little corners on either end. I'm going to delete, remove, delete, remove. Okay. 
So now, look at that. We're getting like a nice smooth transition. This is starting to look actually like a you know angled headstock with a volute and like a solid neck. Uh, last thing we got to do is this guy. Like we want it to be kind of in line with the fretboard and the flat headstock. So uh, hold on, I'm gonna turn this back on, and we're gonna go back to split body. Select this thing, and now I'm going to select the top of the headstock. Okay, take this, delete, remove. Look at that, we're doing it. Last thing, and it's kind of hard to see because the fretboard's in the way. If I turn the fretboard off, you'll see. Um, it's still like, you've got this little weird bump, and we want this to be a totally flat gluing surface. So, split body. Select this for the last time. And then the tool, I'm gonna use the gluing surface of the fretboard. Okay, take this, delete it, remove. Now, after all of that, we are left with a nice, beautiful neck that's got that like uh, volute shape we wanted. It's been a bit of a journey, but we got there. Um, so yeah, that's it for molding the volute, the back of the neck. Um, now I'm gonna start like making cuts into this thing, into the like back of the neck, really. Um, so I'm gonna start with the, uh, the truss rod slot. Now, um, and just a little disclaimer, I already have like, um, you know, examples of files that I'm pulling stuff from. So I know this is the size of the truss rod that I'm gonna use. Um, before you do this, you should measure your truss rod. Not all of them are the same. Um, nope, wrong file. Here we go. All right. Um, but since I'm reusing the same thing, I'm going to insert um, DXF. I'm going to insert it onto here. Where do I have this? Um, let's look for my computer. Trust rod. Oh, okay. All right, so the sketch got imported kind of weird. Let me go to my sketches. Mm-mm-mm. Trash rod. Get out of the way. Come on. All right, um, we're gonna move. Select all this stuff. Wait, what? No. Sketch objects. Come on. Gonna rotate this around. Alright. And I know this is gonna be pretty close. Um, oh, I have that as. Oh, I should project. Okay, sorry. I'm just thinking out loud. I know in this design, this is where the end of the scale length is. So to make sure that I am going to have room for everything, I am going to also project that little shelf I made for the slot, for the nut slot. Um, no. All right, project this guy. Okay. I'm gonna move all this stuff point to point. I'm gonna put that dead center of this guy. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right. Let me just double check this. I want to make sure I did that right. Um, nope, wrong file. I did that one? Yeah, okay. What is this thing? I don't know what the hell that is. Alright, um, finished sketch. So now I'm going to begin um, cutting these into the actual back of the neck. So I'm gonna hit Q. Um, how far down did I have this? 
Sorry, I did a lot of these models like years ago. I do not remember these measurements off the top of my head. Okay. I select that. Control V. Oh, it went positive. I gotta do negative. Bam. All right, it's gonna cut that. And I know that they flare out like this truss rod, or this brand of truss rod rather. Um, inspect, how deep is that? 1.47, okay. Um, mm -mm -mm. Turn the sketch back on. So that's how we do the truss rod slot. Um, I know the actual, like the actual tiger. I'm pretty sure does has like, does not have headstock access to the truss rod. But you know, this is my version of it. So I like making my life easier. Next thing I'm gonna do, our tuning halls. Yay! Oh my god, it's so fun. Um, for that, we're gonna make a sketch on the headstock plane. Um, uh, where is my fret fine 2D fretboard? This thing, we love it. Um, mm -mm -mm. what plane is that on? Oh, that's way down there. All right, I'm going to project some of this geometry here. Well, let me, oh, no, I gotta go and select each one of them. Are you joking? All right, fine. I'm gonna project uh, these endpoints. This is where the string is leaving the nut, ideally. Assuming your nut is made correctly. Okay. Now, it's, it, it is kind of tough because this sketch is actually like, we're projecting it on an angle. Really, those points are gonna be up here, but we just wanna make sure that there's not gonna be like such a severe break from where the string leaves the nut to where the tuner is that it's gonna give you issues when you're actually tuning. Um, so it's always good practice to kind of like know where that stuff generally is going to be. And then, uh, bah, bah, bah. Which, how do I yeah, look at, I wanna look at the face. Wait, what? Okay, hello? Hi. And then I'm gonna turn the canvas on, okay. All right, um, so I'm gonna do an offset of this. I have this headstock, um, I believe most of my stuff, I put these in. How far in do I put them? I don't know. Um, that's a quarter of an inch in, and the radius is 1.97. Uh, Let me do some math here. Mm -mm -mm. 0 0.25 plus the radius, 0 0.197. All right, I'm gonna do an offset of 0 0.447. Um, for this guy, offset. Um, zero point four four seven. Okay. Now we don't need all this. Really, just we want is like this kind of curve, so that way we get the spacing on all of the um, tuners correct. Now, judging by these little guys. Hmm. How do they do it in the actual tiger? They have it flaring out, which is interesting. Mm -mm -mm. Cause we'll get it to go basically Oh, get out of here. 
My concern now is that we might run into an issue where these strings are kind of getting overcrowded up here. I might have to move them back. We'll see. We'll do some lines. We'll do some tests. Um, so about a straight line going here. It would intersect right at, uh, stay at 90 degrees, right at this point. So that means, let's say I do that. And then for spacing, or actually, hold on, if I want these evenly spaced, I should mark out mark out some stuff. Let's do a center line first. And then Sorry, I'm just thinking to myself. Um Yeah, we'll have enough clearance on these. It'll be fine. All right, I want to get, let's say from uh, project, I want them evenly spaced from the widest part of the headstock. Okay, so I'm making a line from here, and then I'm gonna have that be the top. So that measurement is alright. I'm just hoping that this is gonna look good. I also wanna I mean they have this cool inlay up here. I do wanna bind this as well. Oh so I wanna save some space up there, actually. Maybe if I make it from there down to like, let it, I'll just go off of the actual one. I'll just make an arbitrary line. Let's say roughly around uh, here. All right, so from there, point at this intersection I'm going to see what that distance is so this like straight line going from here to there and that so looks like 3.06 so let's get a line bam bam or one six so uh, that's one point five zero eight, right? Should that be halfway? I'm so stupid, I can just use the halfway tool. What am I doing? It'll just say, oh, there it is. All right, and then I'm gonna have that intersect with that curve. Or, uh. No. Okay, there we go, we got that. Keep it 90 degrees, intersect there. Okay, so, trust me gang, I got I got this wrapped up. I, I, I'm a genius, I know what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna make this, I know this looks kind of crazy. I'm gonna make a series of points and this should be more than enough space to accommodate the tuners and then I'm gonna make sure that the strings will not like run into each other or hit the tuners based off of this. Um, so let's do some points. We're gonna plot them there. So we already have one there. I'm gonna do one at this intersection. We have that one there. We have this guy on this side, this guy on this side, and this guy on this side. I'm gonna finish this sketch because I've got a lot of stuff going on. It's very confusing to look at. I'm going to create a new sketch on top of this, uh, whatever. But I'm only going to project those points I made. Um, so I have those.
those. And then I'm actually also, I lied, I'm also going to project these guys. The points are the strings, leave the nut. Okay, and I'm going to turn off that previous sketch. So now I just have these things. Before I begin plotting those out, um, it is important to know that like when you're mapping things for tuning machines, you're not actually mapping it to the dead center because they're wrapping around a post. Um, so the posts that I'm going to be using, I already know, are like five millimeters in diameter. So I'm going to begin by making at these points a series of five millimeter circles. because I know that the string is going to sit on the um, interior of all of these posts. And if you model it where the strings are actually sitting dead center, all of your stuff is going to be off. Ask me how I know about that. Um, all right, cool. So now I can use the line tool I can see if these things are going to run into each other or not. If they do, I'll have to adjust some stuff, but... Ooh, this guy looks a little... Eh, a little close. I think we can get away with that. Let me, let me see what the rest of this does for me. So yeah, those are going in slightly. There's some like, not like these are a little severe, but it's not terrible. Let me see what the actual distance is of that. And if it's like more than an actual string gauge. scrunch these things down. Sorry guys, this is just trial and error. If I move this down, it's going to bring it in more and it's going to just give me a little bit more um, room to play with. So let me go back. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to redo that. Off, or sorry, uh, cancel. Turn this off. New sketch. I'm gonna offset this one. Did I save that? No, nope, it's not five millimeters. What was that? It was. What? Ah, uh, shoot. Hold on. I think I might still have it on my calculator. Yeah, 0 0.447. I could just do a half an inch, probably. And actually, just to make my life easier, I'm gonna delete some of this extra geometry because it's annoying me. Uh, I don't need this, don't need this, don't need this, don't need that. Okay. So my previous one, I had those along there. I'm gonna keep this guy because I wanna have a decent amount of clearance. But what is the distance between these? Uh, let's inspect. It is along a curve, so they might be slightly different. That's one and a half, this is, yeah, basically one and a half. All right. So I'm going to do, let's do, let's try 1.35. Yeah, I think that'll 
that'll give us a little bit extra room and I think we'll be able to fit everything in pretty well. Okay. Project this guy, create points at those intersections. Okay, finish sketch, turn that off. Make another sketch, same thing as I did before, but I'm gonna just project these points that I'm working with. Did I not make one here? No, oh, damn it, hold on. Okay, finish sketch. Go back to this guy. Now I can project this stupid thing. Okay. Turn that off. Run this back, baby. Uh, where is uh... all right? Uh, second time's the charm. I can feel it. much more comfortable having done that. Okay, so now we got our, our string placement. It's gonna work on this headstock. I've saved some room so I can do some kind of inlay up there that I'll eventually wanna do. Uh, feeling good about this. And so, Final step will be to actually like make the holes for this. Um, the tuners. What are these again? Diameter is three point oh. Okay. So I see. Finish sketch, and then Q. I'm gonna select all of these, although now I'm realizing these lines are gonna be annoying and it's gonna cut these circles up into a million shapes, whatever. Just means I gotta click a little more. All right, we're gonna pierce those through. Great. So with that done, oh, the next good stuff. Our neck's looking pretty solid. Honestly, we got we got all of those tuners it, like marked out for. We got, uh, oh no, it's under bodies. The body, fretboard, that. All right, oh, next thing we're gonna do is work on this transition. So we did the back of the neck, now we gotta figure out how the neck's transitioning into the body. And this is probably gonna be the last thing. Eh, I might have a little more time. It's what, eight, 11 right now? Um, so I mentioned in an earlier stream, but uh, I am going to make this a bulletin. Similarly to, you know, the, the truss rod access, I know this is not like period or like actually correct um, relative to the Tiger guitar, but my whole shop is set up for bolt-ons and I find them way easier to work with um, and I just don't have the space to finish an actual like set neck guitar or anything like that so I'm gonna make a neck pocket for this thing um, for that I am going to 
Uh, let's create the sketch here on the back of this guitar. Or actually, no. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to make it. Create sketch on the back of the guitar. I'm going to project the neck. Um, so, do I have that as a... Do I have the, uh, Whatever. It doesn't make a difference. I'm going to offset this because I like there to be like a little bit of a transition. I don't want this to end prematurely before it hits the neck pocket. So to offset that, uh, it's like this tool. I'm going to offset it by like, uh, let's say like a quarter inch. Nope, negative 0 0.25. All right. Then... I'm going to just kind of, uh, no, that's too severe. I'm gonna, I gotta do an arc. I was gonna see if I could do it with a straight line, but it was being annoying. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a spline. Splines were like giving me some trouble earlier, but maybe, maybe we got it now. No. Let's try this guy. No. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to use a stupid spline. Whatever. Just want this to be a nice transition, bro. Come on. No, I don't want it to go in. Ah. Thank you. I wish I could say I came up with the body shape. <laughs> um, put a point there, trim this. No, why are you doing this to me, bro? Fine, I'll just do the spline along here and just make it work. That's close enough. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing up here. Uh, all right, that one went much easier. All right, um, finish sketch. Then I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to project all this geometry, but first I gotta turn the back of the neck off. And again, this is why if you were smart like I'm not, you would name all of your bodies, but I don't, cause I'm a moron. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, it's what, negative 1.75. All right, and instead of cut, I'm gonna have it join. Okay, great. So now we got that. I'm gonna, well, let's work on some of these transitions. I'm gonna hit F for fillet. Click there, this is way too sharp of an angle. It looks horrible. Uh, all right, whatever, I'm just gonna have to, so, oh, hold on, there we go. I'm gonna pull this out, let's do, Let's do uh, 0 0.5, how's that look? And eh, it's a little steep, we'll do quarter? Okay. Um, no, I wanna do that here too, actually. What, hello? Whatever. Uh, um, same thing. Alright, 
so now we got some kind of like at least curvature to that uh, and now I'm going to actually work on the neck pocket and get that kind of sorted out so I don't know what what is this shape from what did I make that for what did I make this for what is going on All right, um, so the neck angle. This is going to have a tunematic style bridge, so it's not gonna have like, it, it should not, right now it's currently sitting like flat, coplanar, the neck would be way too low if I were to actually make it like this. Um, as far as the pickups, I don't really know yet. I gotta, I gotta decide. Uh, I might just get the actual like proper DiMarzio ones, but you know, we'll see. We'll see if I wanna splash out and buy some or just make some. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna move the fretboard. I'm gonna hit M, I'm gonna move the fretboard as well as all of these things because what we want ah, free move I'm gonna move it up just like a weird amount and then I'm gonna rotate it because we're gonna need to add a neck <coughs> sorry well a neck angle to this thing so based off of the bottom of the heel, you generally like whatever four degrees is kind of like the thing with two pneumatic bridges like that. You can do a little more, you can do a little less. I'm gonna do four. Um, and then free move relative to that. Um, how deep do I need to make this? Or should I, um, uh, mm. mm -mm -mm. you know what, I'm going to, I'll leave it there for now, or I'll leave it at, yeah, I'll leave it here for now. I am going to have to actually go back in and change some things once I actually move on to the next part, which will be modeling this actual bridge. Because I want to be able to make sure that I have the most range out of this thing whenever it like is installed in here, so that the uh, these little guys, like the bushing things, um, that I can get the like highest action if somebody wants it or the lowest action. Um, why do you need a neck angle? Uh, because tunematic bridges sit higher than like strat style bridges, and since the strat style bridges are so low profile, you can have the neck be flat. With the tunematic, you have to angle the bridge back so that you can get the neck, the string action closer to the fretboard. Otherwise, your fretboard action is going to be like very high and uncomfortable. But I'm going to pause it there for now. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be a good place to leave it. Um, later, once I maybe off camera, I'll get to actually modeling all of this stuff, and then next week. I can actually have the bridge in here and set the actual depth of that neck, neck pocket to accommodate this neck. But things are coming along pretty well. Um, yeah, we got the, the lion's share of like the actual shape and modeling done. The rest of this, uh, yeah, next time I'll do the bridge. We'll get into some finer details. I'll start marking off where I wanna have like um, electronics. I'm gonna probably give this thing a carve as well. Um, so it's not gonna be a flat top. It's gonna to have like a carved top like the actual one. Um, and then it's really just like modeling for components. And I think I also might chamber this. So I'll go over how to like do a, um, how to do a top, how to use tools to make chambers that are going to like give you a nice even thickness shell throughout the whole thing. Make a nice light resonant guitar. Uh, do you put the angle into the neck pocket or the neck itself? You know, that's a great question. Um, I like to personally do it in the po like angle the pocket and keep the neck flat because that would it's easier to machine the necks when it's flat, if that makes sense. When like the whole bottom of the neck is flat, as opposed to like not i don't know I'll, I'll later i'll do a whole series on like generating tool paths for these things and it'll make more sense when i explain it there um 
but yeah personally i i keep the bat the heel flat and then the pocket angled because you know that's just how i like to do it you could do either um but yeah anyway i think that's it i'm gonna end it early i gotta go to quizzo wish me luck uh hopefully i'm truly blessed in galaxy brain um but i'm gonna save all this i'll put it up on youtube uh so you can go back watch at your own pace uh and go back to things that i breezed over so talk to you later have a good one see ya